first episode of like this weekly type clinic video series I want to do with coaches. And today I have Coach Austin Trotter. He's the head coach at Pine Lake Prep here in North Carolina. Coach, how you doing? I'm doing good, man. Appreciate you having me on. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. So, you know, you hit me up and you were like, hey, I would love to come on and let's talk. Let's do a video. So what you are passionate about, I'm very passionate about. Uh, especially this topic right here, uh, multiple formations, uh, being getting very getting multiple having variations, uh, and then you know it being simple as well. So we're going to talk about formations, uh, all things formations. So if you want to go ahead and take it away, let's let's learn a little bit about some formations, Coach. Yeah. So uh, I'm new on this one. So how do I let's see, let's present? Yeah, present, and then you can share you screen. Can share there screen, it is. and then yeah. Do you want to go to the third option? It says entire screen. It's, it's just usually just easier. Okay. Then it'll be, yep. Perfect. I'm a book. Let's go. All right. Let me get this slideshow going for you. Um, yeah, just real quick, you know, just my information. Uh, I'm at Pine Lake Prep. It's in Mooresville, North Carolina. We're at K-12 Charter School. Uh, that's my personal email. So no matter where I'm at, you can hit me on that. Twitter down below. Um, always up for talking and sharing anything we do. So, like, hey, as we were talking, you know, why why do we want to use a lot of personnel groups for us? Why are we using a lot of formations? Um, you know, for us, we got to get different ways to attack. Uh, we don't have a big offensive line. Uh, our biggest guy is 6'2", 245, but our other guys are, are 6'1", 210, 215, 200. So we've got to find different ways that we can get – to attack the defense. Um, when you have a lot of different formations, especially, you know, it allows you to use less plays by disguising them. You know, the old saying, you know, plays are expensive, formations are cheap, but it really holds true, especially for with the way that we do our run game, which, you know, we may do a video on that here soon as well. Um, but it allows us to, to keep things very simple up front, which is important to me, uh, but giving a lot of different looks that can be confusing for a defense. Um, I know some people might get offended by this next one, but I've, I've kind of found it to be true. You know, most D coordinators under about 35 have grown up in a spread dominated world. They're used to seeing 10 personnel guys coming out, you know, two by two, three by one, some 11 personnel, but typically it's not with true tight ends, tight ends and H backs, two H backs, um, unbalanced O line sets. Uh, big thing is, you know, it creates uh, defensive confusion. You know, we're dealing with 14, 18 year olds. All right. So the more that we can give them that they have to try to figure out and look at, uh, the better for us offensively. It makes them uncomfortable. Now they're sitting here trying to think and figure out where to line up versus just getting set to play. If you're a team that plays, you know, with a tempo and a fast tempo, being able to do this really creates more confusion. And by doing that, you force teams into some very basic fronts, coverages, blitz packages. You know, you take away all those exotic coverages and sim pressures and all these different stunts and twists up front. Um, they're just trying to get lined up. And, and being with this, you know, it's you end up being kind of contrarian. Again, most of the teams that, that we're seeing now are, you know, 10, some 11 personnel teams. Um, if you're coming into a game with, you know, 21, 22, 13 personnel groups, teams don't see it. So now they're not used to lining up against it. They haven't seen it. So, again, it kind of helps um, make things different for you. And then, you know, at the high school level, we have different substitution rules in college. So we don't have to allow time for the defense to match our subs. So if you're really good at this and you can get your guys to where you're changing personnel really, really quickly, um, it makes it even harder for them because now they don't have time to either match it if they're going to or trying to figure out what you're lining up in which again goes back to it forces them into very basic fronts coverages and allows you as an OC to have a better idea of, of what you're going to get so that you can uh, attack them properly. Uh, I had to include this. Um, you know, you're going to make the opposing DC spend all weekend drawing up plays. During the middle of the season, this is a quote that I got from one of our opposing coaches. He texted me, he's like, hey, you know, have you figured out which one of these 16, 17 formations you're going to run? You know, I've run out of room and I'm making up names. And, you know, I messaged him back and kind of messed him a little bit. I said, yeah, I got five more and we'll put in this week. And he just sent me back like, I don't understand how you do it. So, again, that was kind of like why I wanted to do this talk is to show that, you know, it may look complicated, but in reality, it's it's really not. 
Um, I included this clip right here. Just I wanted to show a picture of, of what I'm talking about as far as kind of creating confusion for guys. Uh, this was against one of the teams that's in our conference, and, and we played them. They're usually one of the top teams in, in their classification. Um, and we were able to catch them. You know, we, we came out of a timeout, sent this formation out. And, you know, we've got six offensive linemen. I got three down here. We got two H backs, one lone receiver, quarterback, and running back. And as you can tell, they've got, you know, one, two, three, four, five guys to the field. Um, but down here on the bottom is what it is. You know, you got an A gap player and a D gap player. You don't have any B or C gap defenders. And, you know, this was a, a third and one in a really, in a close game and in a conference battle. Um, and we were able to pick up 20 yards because there was nobody in there. And we actually ran this a couple more times and ended up scoring off of it before they were ever able to adjust because we played with tempo. They kept lining up the same. We kept attacking the same. Um, I went through the season and I picked just four random games to kind of show what we do. So as you can see in each of these, I've got you know, the different personnel groups that we used uh, and how many different formations we used out of each one of them. Now, you notice in this early game, 12, 20, and 21, we only had one formation out of it. And when I say a formation, like if it's a, a two by one with an H to the single side, and then I flipped that and we went, you know, twins left with eight, I still count that as one formation for me. That's not two. Um, moving a running back from left to right really isn't a different formation for me because I give our running backs the freedom to kind of line up where they want to on, you know, most plays unless they have to line up a certain way. So I don't really count that in the formation totals so but even if we're only getting into one formation um you have to recognize what personnel groups coming on the field you know you've got to communicate that to your players on defense you've got to try to come up with what you want to match up against that and if we're only running two or three plays or one formation or two formations they still have to identify it they still have to get lined up to it and again if you're playing with tempo there's not a lot of time to do that so, again, it comes back and you're able to hurt teams because they don't get lined up properly. Um, but as you can see here, you know, we used, you know, five, four, five, and six different personnel groups, um, 12 up to 19 different formations in a game just to be able to try to find every advantage we can. Now, here's all the different personnel groups. I'll let our guys name most of our stuff. Um, so as you can see, I mean, we use 10, 11, 12, 13, 20, 21, 22. We've got a 30 personnel set, uh, some special sets that we do over here. Uh, we lined up in the wishbone at times. Um, our 31 P Davidson is, is based off of Davidson College and, and a lot of what they do. Um, Beast is a single wing set. You know, I, I brought in a retired coach. It, he had just retired, but as a head coach, he'd been coaching for 50 years, and, and he kind of pushed for me to use it in certain situations, and we liked it. Um, a power I set. Uh, Viking is actually one of my favorite sets. The 6 ol one H back, two Ys in the back. Uh, Razorback was a primarily a two-point goal line type play for us. It's kind of a combination of a Wildcat and a Mike Leach's big goal where you got your center, the ball's on the hash, your center's on the hash, and the rest of your O-line is all into the boundary. So we did some things there just to try to catch people. Uh, our typical alignments, you know, the way we identify people, our X is on the outside left. Um, standard alignment's at the bottom of the numbers. Our Y, we call that guy the Y. Uh, he's on the right-hand side, typically. The, the Z is our slot, and he goes to the strength. Um, our R, which stands for kind of like a rover, running back, receiver guy. He aligns away from strength in two by two, and then two to strength in three by one. When we draw the stuff and we teach it, we teach it from a pistol alignment so that then we want to go offset, nothing changes for them. And if we have an H back, he replaces the R most of the time. So, and you'll see when we get into the formations and how we call stuff, how we're able to make that work. Um, so we'll just start with our, our Vegas personnel. Our guys liked it and they, they said it was our money personnel early on. So um, you'll see here, we call this Wolf, the, 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 don't worry about terminology. Everybody has their own terminology. Our stuff goes back 20 plus years when I first started coaching, but um, basically, the X and the Y are wide. The L tells the Z that he's going to the left, so the R goes opposite. Um, that's just our base. War goes to the right. Late for us is the trip's left. Early is the trip's right. We have other stuff. We have bunch sets. We have different things. We have 
um, wings, which bring them in as, as almost like slot backs. Uh, close brings those guys in. But all we do is we have the same base formation call and then a tag to adjust it. So now when we get into our 11 personnel, which we call Baylor, uh, you'll see how Wolf now, nothing changes for the X, the Y, and the Z. And that's why, you know, a lot of people are like, well, that's not the same formation. Well, you're right, it's not. But I didn't want to come up with a new name when only one person is different. Everybody else is the same. So when I say Wolf, the X knows, hey, I'm lining up left out here. The Z knows I'm slot left. So instead of coming up and calling this, you know, something different, the only person who has to know that he lines differently here is, is the H back because he replaced the R. He now goes to the weak side, but his he's never lining up out wide um, unless I tagged him to flex out. So again, you can kind of see how these all work the late. It's still a trip left, but now we have an H back involved. Um, we will tag some over, which now tells like over right tells the backside receiver you're coming over to the right hand side. Look, I'm, I'm an old country guy. I don't make it difficult. All right, over right. Um, Ram for us was a trips right set, and now the H back moves to the backside tight end. Line is the opposite. Okay, now here's one of my favorite things to do uh, is a heavy tag. So heavy for us means that if it's heavy right, um, our left tackle now becomes the right tight end, and the H back goes and plays left tackle. So if we were in war, all right, or Z's to the right, heavy right, okay, now the X just has to identify when there's a heavy call, if the H is to his side, he can step off and be off the line. We just want to make sure because um, now he's still, the H is still eligible. We're not covering him up. Uh, when in doubt, those guys know to be on just to ensure that, you know, we don't have an illegal formation, but um, they need to recognize that the backside of this, you know, they can be off. Line heavy left. Okay. Uh, Army personnel. Another great one that, you know, we were talking about a little bit ago. This is our two H back. We have an H and a fullback that line up here. The F takes the place of the Z. So now Wolf is the same formation that we've talked about in 10 and 11 personnel. Okay. It's still a two by two set. X to the left, Y to the right. Now the F knows he's aligning as an H back, a sniffer or, or whatever you want to call him. To the left side and the h is still in his alignment to the right we can go over right out of this late um over calls you know i do like to keep the f inside and that's the only little tweak that we make to this uh because if we're running you know a counter play an f h counter i want the h to do the same thing every time so he's always the rap guy so the f would be the kick guy uh, he would take the place of, of a guard as opposed to like a GH counter. So that's the only reason that's a little bit differently. And our H typically is a is a better receiver than the F. So this allows him to easier for him to release out on routes as well by being the uh, the outside guy. Um, Bison is another great personnel that we like to use. Uh, it is a heavy package for us. Um, we can bring in a tight end or bring in a sixth OL. So now it's a little bit different. Okay, so now we call NART because now the Y is in and on the line. There's that in kind of play on words there. NART, okay. Now the on call is telling the R, who's our second running back here, he's on, which on is to the right, off is to the left. All right, it doesn't matter about where the, the strength is. I kept it simple for them. That way they're not having to look around. On right, off left. All right, we can split back these guys. We ran some go-go this year. Um, really like some of the things that we got out of it and just to be able to, to out-align people um, off to, to the left. And I'll kind of scroll through these pretty quickly. But it just shows how with a simple word and, and, and maybe in a tag, you know, you can get guys into all kinds of different formations um, that you can attack with. And here's a heavy set. This is really nice, too, because now we have a major overload to the left, but we still have an eligible receiver to the right. So teams have to honor that. You'll, they'll keep a corner. Sometimes they'll keep a safety over top as well just to make certain. And now you're, all you're doing is just gaining advantage to the, to the strength. Um, my favorite personnel group from what we do is, is out of 11 personnel. The reason is because we can easily shift from, from five wide to a, to a heavy run set without changing personnel. Um, this is, you know, added stress because of how many different ways we can align. 
So just simply, you know, here's Wolf, two by one with an H back set, same personnel. I can go heavy. I got trips to the left with an extra tackle over here, an unbalanced set. Um, we can bring those guys in close. Now we have a condensed set that we can either, you know, expand out of with routes or we have guys that can help pin in and, and we can pull around. Um, we can go empty. I can move that B anywhere. I could put him to the right, put him over here to the left and have a quads look out of it. We can come over with the over, and now this is very similar to what we, you know, kind of called coastal previously with, with two backs and an, and an off H with two wide. So you can kind of see the different ways um, that we can we can do that. And then if I can get this to pull up right here, I want to – this is what – this is that kind of clip, some of the clips that I was talking to you about beforehand. And this is from this year. Um, this is all one drive. So, you know, here we are in a, in a two by two set. Okay. The next play, now we bring in 11 personnel. And now we've got trips with an H back. All right. Move the ball down the field again. Now we got trips with an H. We're on the counter. Great running back. Kid led the state of North Carolina in rushing this year during the regular season. Um, blessed to have a kid like that. All right. Now, okay. We've got six offensive linemen with an H back, two wide receivers, and an offset back. Okay. This is where you can really start messing with people because now, and, and having a lineman, they see that number, they don't think tight end. So it kind of messes with them at times. Um, you know, they're, they're shifting. They're not sure where to line up. Guys are moving around. Where do I go? Okay. We come back. Good play right here. All right. Wish my tackle when he pulled would have picked somebody up, but it is what it is. Now, this is what I love. Okay. We got twins down here. We got three offensive linemen to the left, two to the right with an H back. Watch what the defense gives us because they are uncertain. All right. Coaches are hollering at them to get to shift, to move. They're overplaying the H. So it's hard to tell right here, but essentially we have a right side shade. So we have an A gap, a B gap, and a C gap defensive lineman with a stand up back or in a corner. Down here to the strength. There's no A gap lineman, no B gap, no C gap. We got to stand up in playing D with two backers at four yards off the ball. Um, just because we shifted into this and and we're moving pretty fast right now. I don't know about you, but I mean, I could almost run through this hole because of what happened. Just misalignment um, with with teams. So I'll stop sharing that and see if that pulls up for you. All right. You're muted, Coach. Sorry, I was muted. All right. A <clears throat> couple of things. One, love it. Love it. Uh, and I love how I've seen certain – some guys, you know, their – if formation is set to one side and X goes away and the things like that, um, but you're a, you're a left and a right outside receivers guy. Correct. So yeah, like I mean, and, and the reality is for us, I mean, there's guys that, you know, sometimes we'll flip that around, but it's, yeah, you know, it's but it allows us to play call. a little quicker. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's a little bit of that Mike Leach, you know, influence, I guess. Yeah. Um, and I like how you you have tags for informations. So you're, having, you're teaching those things instead of having to be like, well, I want to be able to do this, but well, let me scratch all this and let me create a whole new formation and a whole new name and, no, you you have your base, and then you have tags that just create new variations, and that's I, I love that. It's, it's not it's not like you say it's not expensive, you know. To, yeah, to do it's those really things. not. I mean, you know, again, I, I didn't see the the point in creating a new name yeah. for six guys to learn when only one guy has to change, mm -hmm. right? So with with Wolf, like we said, you know, wide the X and Y are wide, disease to the left. If I pull the R out, now here's the other thing that we can do. Um, that really can can mess with people as well. And that's the reason why I like 11 personnel. And I kind of showed that, you know, we can go split back. Like I can go wolf and I'll tag split. And now the R, because he's kind of like a second running back guy. So if like the air raid guys, he is like the H guy who can move into the backfield at times. Um, I just tag split. Wolf split. Now he knows he's, we're going split back and he's to the right because he would have been right slot. Now he's the right back. Okay. If I went late split, 
Now, instead of lining up left, now he's in the backfield on the left side. So it makes it easy for those guys to understand, okay, where am I supposed to be at in relation to left and right side? And then now I just got to know where this little tag puts us. I mean, I've tagged him at wings before, um, you know, even those guys without having to get into an H-back set, just to give different variations and, and different looks. Um, like I said, if we do a video, especially like a run game, I mean, it, it, it doesn't change anything for the O-line. It just yeah. allows us to have different looks and different ways to attack. Um, but we could run all of our past concepts. Their routes would stay the same, whether they're, you know, wide wing, wherever. We're, they just got to know their landmarks. So that's what makes it nice is, is being able to move the pieces around. Um, but the core integrity of the play stays the same. But now to the defense, you're running all these different plays, all these different formations, when in reality, guys – I went back and looked. I mean, some games we ran seven or eight plays. Realistically, that was what that's all we ran was seven or eight different individual concepts where the runner pass. But we did it out of five personnel groups and 19 formations, but it's the same play. Yeah. And and that allows our guys to to learn it because our guys are playing both ways. You know, we're we're a, a two-way school with one A numbers. Um, I had 25 essentially guys that were playing for us on Friday nights. And those guys are playing both sides of the ball. I mean, you're looking at that offensive line. Four of the five offensive linemen are starting on defense. Um, you know, in years past, my quarterback has been my starting free safety. So, you know, for us, we have to keep things as, as simple as possible because these guys are having to learn offense and defense every single week. So it, that's kind of where the whole, hey, look, instead of putting in 15, 20 different plays, let's just figure out ways that we can keep it the same make it look differently, give us some advantages formationally. Um, and that doesn't even include any motions that we may do, you know, jet motion, orbit motion returns. We, we, we can add all that stuff to it. Um, but it's just, it allows us to have different ways to attack it and to protect our, our core concepts. Um, so. Question, and not, not to get into the run game, because like I said, we, we want to do another video like that. But <clears throat> if you tag it, if you're tagging a formation and – so you like you said you you're doing uh, like wide you know, your wolf split and your H is on your right. If you're doing a run where normally you would have the back on the right run the ball, are you cross training your guys in the backfield that either one of them can run it based off what play call it is, or are you as a play caller having to okay now this formation goes with this play this way, I have to call it. I can't run in this play to the it, left. It depends, on, it, this depends on, it depends on the personnel we have that year. Okay. Um, you know, the kid that was playing that that R spot a lot for us this year is not a guy that I would have run inside stuff. Yeah. You know, he, he was five foot nine and 150 pounds. I'm not having him run power and counter. So, but then there are times where we did go with two backs that were legitimate running backs for us. And then, yeah, you know, I could, and I'll be honest with you, I give our running backs a ton of freedom. Um, yeah. Like if we're in true, you know, 20 personnel, two running backs back there, I'll call it. And, you know, whichever guy wants it can take it now. You know, they've got pretty good about sharing it, you know, and it could be yeah. sometimes where like our main guys, like, look, they're keying on me. I'm going to go, you know, if we're going to run, like we can run GT counter. So let's say we're running GT counter to the left. Okay. At a split back. We'll have our left back cross the front side just to try to give a little hold, freeze them up. And he knows, look, man, they're keying on me. I'm going to go, and they're going to run with me, and it's going to open you up. Um, yeah. You know, so they – yeah, they can do that. Now, again, I, if it's if it's a guy like I have, you know, the personnel that we had at times this year, um, yeah, I'm going to set the formation so the guy that I want to get the ball is getting it. But, you know, it's it, it depends on who's on the field. Like I said, if it's, if it's two true running backs back there, then, yeah, I'll either let them sort it out um, or, you know, I can call it and they'll line up. But – you know, it's we do try to give them some freedom. Gotcha. Uh, pass game wise, you, you mentioned this um, when you and not talking about your concepts or anything like that, but when you're so you call a play, and are you teaching your guys, hey, you're number one, you're number two, you're number three, if it's a three man route, and then if you're switching guys around, like you're moving those puzzle pieces, now a new they just need to know what number they are in the, in the, in the concept, or are you teaching, or how do you, how do you do that with moving guys around? Yeah. So, you know, 
when I first kind of went away from the old school number system and went to just a, a, a concept based passing game. Um, yeah, that's what we went with. It's, you know, you have to understand the picture of the play. Yeah. Right. So if if this time you're lined up as the number one, then you got to know what number one does. Next time you can be lined up as the number two, as long as you know what number two does. So that allows us, again, to give a different look of a formation, but the concept is the same. Um, it's a little bit more learning, but these guys are – I mean, I, I have really, really smart kids. I mean, I've got guys with 4.5 GPAs and 34 ACTs and going to West Point and, you know, high academic level school. So, um, you know, they're able to pick that stuff up. But, again, and then we have tags for that stuff. You know, we can we – can, you know, sw- you know, switch and swap and, and different things, words like that. We'll, we'll switch different guys' routes within the concept. Um, but we don't really do that that much. Um, just kind of depends upon what, you know, the guys we have, and especially who our quarterback is that year and, and what is he comfortable with. Um, but, yeah, as long as they know the picture of the play, then then they know what to run. It's not like the Y always runs – this. So if you're lined up here, you know, you got to know it's, it's, you got to know the picture of the play. So what would, in your opinion, you know, you're, you, know, you, you're, you're the head guy, you're doing this, you set the, the practice schedule, you know, what's the, just, what's the, some, maybe some disadvantages to maybe doing some of this stuff, if there are any, maybe practice wise, you know, if you, if anybody hasn't watched the video with Coach Strader, kind of like the introduction of who he is and stuff like that, with the type of guys he has, like the numbers wise. What what kind of disadvantages do you might right run into with some of this stuff? It's hard to practice every formation during the week. Yeah. Um, there's legitimately times that I've called stuff that we have never actually lined up in practice and ran. Um, just from that formation. And again, that's kind of the kind of the beauty of of the 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 weird beauty of that we can line up in something having never ran it from this formation, but as long as we understand the rules of the concept, whether run or pass, we can do it. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, and then, and that's what allows us to be so versatile. I mean, there were legitimately times where I'm like, okay, they're giving me something that I wasn't expecting. Right. And so what's the best way to attack this? Well, I need to be able to put this guy here and this guy here. Well, coach, we didn't practice that this week. Well, guess what guys, we're going to do it. Okay. Now has that backfired on me at times? Sure. Okay. It, it doesn't always work out perfect. Um, but I, I would dare say that, you know, it's, it's a lot more successful than, than it hasn't been. Um, and again, it's just because of, of the simple rules that we put in place for each of our concepts to understand what their, you know, what the end goal is. And, you know, as long as those guys understand that I can line them up anywhere and, and they can run the play, but it is it's the negative is I can't, I would be out there for four hours a day trying to line up in all the possible ways that we could line up and to run that play. It's just, it's not something that you can feasibly do. And I know there are people like, well, you can't, if you haven't practiced it, you can't run it. Well, you know, I've, and I kind of used to be that way. And then I realized, look, we have to be able to adapt because some of the, the best things that we've done in games is when we've been able to identify a weakness and adjust to it. And, and our guys are able to pick it up. And again, that goes back to them being, you know, just really intelligent kids. Um, sometimes I tell them, they mean, they're not the most, football smart at times um but they uh just overall intelligent they, they grasp things quickly and and that's kind of an added benefit that you know we're able to do that because those guys pick up stuff you know a whole lot faster than i ever did when i was a player so oh, yeah. uh, no doubt well coach last thing i kind of want to pick your brain real quick um this is kind of more of a fun question to kind of put you on the spot i know you talked about how your 11 personnel is probably like your best you know because you can get into a whole bunch of different types of stuff. So, but what is what from what uh personnel is your favorite? Like, hey, that that's what I want to go with. If it's eleven, great. And then, what's your favorite formation? I mean, you can describe it if you already have it drawn up, great. But what is your number one formation? Hey, you just love it. So, eleven personnel is my favorite because it's the most versatile. Okay, but <laughs> my most favorite, like, I'm an offensive lineman. I love running the football. Yeah, uh, yeah. Now I love throwing the ball too. Don't get me wrong. I mean, there's, you know, I, I had a, our playoff game, we came out and we're throwing the football all over the field. Um, kind of forgot how much I like throwing the ball, but you know, there are times where if we can get, like I showed you, you know, on that, on that one, that, that picture of six offensive linemen, 
two H backs, one wide receiver. And and that quarterback I had that year was special. Like he was six foot two, 220 pounds, ran a, a four, six, five, uh, was a good enough athlete that he walked on to Missouri as a linebacker. Um, if I have an athletic quarterback like that, give me some type of, of two H back set or a six O L with two H's where I can get a lot of guys moving, um, pulling guards and tackles and H backs and fullbacks and, and a lot of misdirection. And we're going to run downhill on you. And then when you overload it, you know, we got a lot of answers to it. Um, you know, we can even, I mean, that's, that, that gives me, you know, that, that's my, that's my happy place. And our guys know that when there's times we can get into those sets, they, they know that's what, you know, where I really get excited is when we're able to just control teams and move the ball on them that way. Um, so, yeah, when we get into some of those really heavy sets, that's – I do like doing that, you know. But, again, it takes kind of the right personnel to be able to do that, you know. I think you can do it without an athletic quarterback. That's a little bit harder. You kind of lose a big dimension of it. Um, so, if you have the right personnel to get into that stuff, you know, and then for me, I, I, I love option football too. You know, that's that's kind of what I grew up with and, and came up in and started coaching early on was, was option football. But back then it was, you know, I formation like Nebraska was um, and, you know, under Osborne and all them. So that was, that has a special place for me too. But, you know, with us and what we're able to do, 11 personnel is just so flexible. You know, we're able to get into to heavy sets and run sets and, and but still have trips and, or four wide. All I have to do is flex them out. Now I'm in four wide. Um, so, but in a perfect world, and I'll say this, I don't talk a lot, but I'll say this in a perfect world. If I have an athletic quarterback that can throw and run, I have two really good H back types. Six, you know, our, our tight end H back is 6'3, 200 pounds, 195, somewhere in there. He's not some big giant, you know, road grader. Um, a couple of years ago, I had a kid that was 6'2, 225 and could run and catch. He's, he's playing D3 ball in DC right now and, and doing great. Um, if I had two guys like that that could run and catch, but also block like a lineman and an athletic quarterback, then we're going to sit in that 12 personnel and I want to shoot those guys into the flats. We're going to throw deep choice routes with our outside guys, and I'm going to use our, our quarterback and our running back and, and eat you up that way. So I hear you. Hey, that we would all love to have that that type of guy. Um yeah, I mean, and again, I got blessed with one for, for one year in COVID. Uh, we, we had nine games and um, because of him, we we led the state of North Carolina in scoring for four or five weeks out of the season, and, and he was the highest scoring quarterback in the state, and uh, set a bunch of records with him. Man, he was a special kid, and so that's you know we already do some of those things. And it was fun, you know, but you know those guys don't come around often. So yeah, not at our level. Well, at least. I know, right? <clears throat> um, well, coach, I appreciate you coming on and talking formations and personnel, and you know the variations that they're you know, how fair you can get. Uh, but it, not having to be so expensive with doing it. Uh, if you guys want to check out uh, Coach Trotter's on Twitter, uh, Coach Trotter75, hit him up. He's very open. He'll talk to you and, uh, you know, get his information. He'll, he'll talk ball. And if you have any questions about any of this stuff, he'll definitely, um, you know, hit you up and talk about it. But, Coach, I really appreciate you coming on. Hey, not a problem. Appreciate you having me. Yes, sir.